Let's see. Which station is Radio Trista? Ah, there we go. It's Sunday, November 8th, 2020, and you're listening to Radio Trista. On today's episode of Alvin Town, we're going to be focused on Next Gen, specifically with the PS5 and Xbox Series X releases. It's very exciting that we have finally, finally made it to Next Gen. Now, I'm going to be doing a ton of unboxings and different videos and impressions and different streams of tons of stuff this week because I bought both consoles. So, keep a watch out on my YouTube and Twitch page for various videos and information that will be coming out this week. So, by the way, let's get started. First article we're going to talk about today is if your PS Plus subscription is ending, Sony is offering 25% discount codes to extend that. Now, this is only happening to people that are expiring, like right now. Odds are, if you're watching this, you didn't get this email. But here's what it says. So, hopefully if you get this, you can extend yours so you can get lots of great free games right away on the PS5. One of which, of course, Bug Snacks. Gotta play Bug Snacks. Gotta. Gotta do it. Here's a list of every... PS5 and Xbox Series X S launch game that will be available on day one. So I think this is a very important thing to talk about this week. Because a lot of people are like, I don't know what to buy. I don't know what we should get. I have no idea. So let's get into it. Ark Survival Evolved. Uh, it's for other stuff. It's optimized for Xbox Series. Valhalla. Obviously... It's good to go for both. Astro's Playroom is for PS5 only. Bugsnacks is PS5 only. Borderlands 3, you can get upgrades for both of them. Bright Memory 1.0. I didn't know what this was, but uh, it's Xbox. So, yep. Cuisine Royale, another one that d don't know, but you can get it. Demon Souls, which I've honestly heard so much about this game at this point, I'm tired of hearing about it. Uh, it's PS5 only. I hope everyone beats it really fast so they could uh, talk about something else. David Buffet Cry 5 Special Edition. It's on both, but you have to buy a new copy. You cannot upgrade your current copy. That's something a lot of people aren't happy about, but it is what it is. Now we have Dirt 5. It's free for both. Enlisted. It's Xbox only. Evergate only. Um. There's a price, but they don't know how much yet. The Falconeer. This is a game that I'm going to pick up. I, I don't know if we'll get it on launch day at this point, because I haven't ordered it yet. I'm kind of slow on that, sorry. Fortnite. Uh, if you're watching my videos, you probably don't play this game, so it's fine. Uh, Forza Horizon 4. Gears 5, Gears Tactics. All Xbox games. Godfall. My most hyped game. It's also out on PC, and we'll be talking about that a bit later in the show. King Oddball, I don't know what that is, but you could play it for Xbox. Let's see the Man Eater, table for both. Manifold Garden, all these games I've never even heard of. Congrats, Xbox, you get that. Marvel Spider Man. Yep. The remastered one is PS5 only. So if, if you already own the one for. Uh, PS4, you have to buy the upgrade. NBA 2K21. Only with a $100 Mamba edition. Wow, that's, that's great. I, I don't buy, I don't buy this. No Man's Sky, it's free. Do people still play this? Like, okay. Anyway, Observer, System Redux. Uh, no upgrade path, but you can play it on both. I, again, don't know what it is. Now this one, this one, oh boy. They're going to have a 6K downscale to 4K 60 FPS mode. That's gonna be so pretty. It ran like trash at 4K on uh, the Xbox One X. So I'm very excited to dive back into this game again. We're gonna be playing that this week, guys. Hope you 
And Joe, I basically scale way down to 72060, but still. Overcooked. Yep. Yep. Sackboy. That's one I care about. Should be a good time. Sea of Thieves for Xbox. Planet Coaster for both. I... Tetris Effect. Yay. I... Why? I just... I... The Pathless for PS5. That's great. Tourist and War Thunder. Warhammer. Uh, Watch Dogs Legion. PS5 disc launch the 24th. Yakuza Like a Dragon. I'll be playing it on PS5. And, yeah. So these are every game you could buy to play on your new system day one. Surprising, a whole bunch of titles I've never even heard of available for Xbox. I know what I'm picking up. I'm really excited for this one. So, let's keep the show moving forward. PS5 will have game presets that will let gamers start every game with their preferred settings. So this is a big deal. It really is. So, do you want more PS5 info before it launches? Of course you do. That's why you're watching this. Right? So they're going to make it to where you can set a default difficulty, a default performance resolution mode, first person, third person, subtitles. I think this is cool. I really like this. This is neat. So I hope that this actually goes well. Um, the problem is, action games, I don't play at the same difficulty. I play turn-based games. Just, I don't, don't. So we'll see how this turns out. Cool idea, though. Thanks, Sony, for putting that in the game console. Now, this has a lot of people upset. And I, I get it, because there's a lot of people with 1440p monitors that want to play the PS5. But listen to me. Are you listening? It's Callie here. Your TV probably does not support 1440p. Again, are you listening to me? Your television does probably not support this. There's not many that do. It's probably less than 10% of televisions. So this is for people that want to play on a uh, PC monitor that supports 1440p. Um, you know, as if you're a PC gamer, like, I am. I, I, this, everything is 1440p. So, it'll be interesting to see. Um, again, if you're playing on a TV, this legit does not affect you at all. Like, you don't care. It only affects you if you're playing with a 1440p gaming monitor. If you're doing that, I'm sorry. You have this problem you can't fix. Nothing we can do about it. Moving on. Console sharing and offline play. This is the new, air quotes, primary PS4 system thing. So, it's the new name of the system PlayStation players will think of as a primary PS4 system. Well, it's crucial for those game sharing and other friend, family member. So, uh, this will be interesting to see how it turns out. You automatically have this feature enable your first PS5, but you could disable it and use it on another. Who's getting two of these? Like, at launch, like, anyway. You could still have a primary PS4 set up alongside it with console sharing, offline play. That'll be interesting to see how this turns off. Um, not really sure how well that's gonna work. It'll be interesting. But, uh, if this affects you, be sure to read this article at Stevivore. See, I probably butchered the name. Anyway, moving on. This is the one piece of news I was not happy to read. Sony confirms the PS5 will not support SSD storage expansion at launch, reserved for a future update. Now, um, we all know that you're going to have about 667 gigabytes of space after the OS. That is known, that is a fact. So, they should allow that M.2 slot to be used. But they're not. Of course they're not. There's a spot to put in there. But it's disabled out of the box, reserved for a future update. Uh... It's very... It's very fortunate, unfortunate this happened. I, I can't wait until this is done. Um, you have to have a drive that does at least 5.5 gigabytes per second. 
and not have a giant heat sink so large they won't fit into the drive bay. So this is gonna fill up fast. Um, I mean, look, Sackboy small. This is 105 gigs, 66. This, that, look how these games are gonna take up the space so fast. It's it's just poof gone. So luckily, Samsung unveiled their new 980 Pro SSD a couple months ago with 7,000 megabytes per second of read speed. Now, if I have a choice, and this list is compatible, this is what I'm buying. When the slot becomes available. Samsung makes very, very good NVMe drives. You have to have a PCIe 4.0 NVMe M.2 drive that will work with this. And I think it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a while before they get this implemented, but when it does, Look at this one and bitch mark everything against this drive. Um, I have one of their uh, PCI Gen 3 ones in my uh, PC right now. It's very fast. Very, very fast. And uh, it's like 3.5 gigabytes per second, but that's still not fast enough for the new uh, PS5 architecture. So be sure to hold off on this until Sony says, hey, you could do the thing because it's not going to work anyway, any, right away. So just hold off on that. That's my recommendation. That's what I'm going to be doing. And when it becomes available, I'm going to buy one of these suckers and shove it in there. And we will have an extra terabyte of space. So let's talk about PS5 backwards compatibility. So this website, Push Square, went through some different game tests. Day is gone. Did a load test on the PS5 versus PS4 Pro. It's huge improvements. Massive. Massive, massive. I just thought of 5. Not very much difference on the online cold boot single player. It's like a third of the time, if not better. Last of Us Part 2 also dropped significantly. Uh, Assassin's Creed Syndicate, we know there's problems. Here's a, a GIF of the different glitchy things that you'll see. But they did say, hey, this is not a, this is not a thing. It's, it's not optimized, doesn't work right. Uh, Data of War, we have uh, it's increased load times. Not as much as you would expect. I'm thinking that a lot of these uh, PS4 games aren't going to be nearly as optimized as the PS5 titles. They're just going to be blazing fast in just mere seconds. But it's still an improvement. Bloodborne. I will play it once there's a 60 FPS patch. That's all I have to say. And if there's not, then I probably won't. But it's low times to go way down. Way down. Ghost of Shima. I know a few of you are waiting for the PS5 to play this game, which is probably a good decision. Um, I, I think it's one of my later articles here. Did I take that article out? Must have took it out. So... Ghost of Tsushima, it looks really pretty on the PS5, with boost mode turned on, it's like 60 FPS, the game looks like a completely different game. Now my TV has a really nice smoothing function, so it looked great to me, but then it would look even better. Um, I already platinumed it, but I will be playing this on the PS5 with my friends from the Attorney Archives Discord on the multiplayer mode, so if you want to hang out with us there, join our Discord and hang out. So, it's a good improvement, but not as much as I was expecting. I could tell you from owning a 3.5 gigabyte per second NVMe drive for over two years, I knew it wasn't going to be that big of a difference because there's still low times on games on PC. But it is a big improvement over standard SSDs and definitely the spinning disks. So now we're going to talk about Godfall, the game I'm most excited for. It's a six-month console exclusive ending in May, but it could probably come to the X. Um, I think it'd be good on that. Hopefully it ends up being a great game on the next system, uh, on the PS... I can't talk, guys, sorry. On the Xbox as well. Or if you don't want to play it on PlayStation, you can play it on PC. Here's the minimum specs. Windows 10, recommended. Yeah, but one thing they don't talk about 
that this is something I found, this is probably my favorite article I found today, is that Godfall will use 12 gigabytes of VRAM at 4K Ultra, and the RTX 3080 and 3070 do not have enough video RAM to run the game at 4K Ultra. Now, AMD, they do. The RTX 6800, 6900, they can. So at this point, I say if you are not a streamer, you need to be buying these cards instead. That's all I have to say. Or you shell out for that 3090, which has a 24 gig frame buffer. I mean, you could just buy this card and you'd be good. If you got the money, just buy the 3090. It, best of both worlds, do that. So this, this made me, uh, <laughs> I laughed quite a bit, actually, when I, when I saw this, I was like, ah, PC Gaming Master Race, but, but you gotta have a card that can do it. Oh, I did leave the ghost shot, ah, I did, I left it. Uh, so this game, I watched this video, it's, uh, go check it out at GameSpot, PS4 Pro versus PS5. Guys, I, uh. I was amazed at this. I'm not just going to hit play, but you guys can go look it up. Um, I have an SSD in my PS4 Pro, and I have a TV that has really good smoothing technology, so it looks good. But this, the PS5, it's so pretty. I uh, I hope you guys enjoy this game on PS5. Definitely worth the wait. So, we're going to talk about some financial stuff. Uh, Marvel's Avengers lost a ton of money whole lot of money. Six and a half billion yen. Yep. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Wouldn't say how many sold. Volumes are 60% of plan. Plus game cost over 100 million to make. And only sold 3 million. Yeah, that's, uh... That's just not good. Anyway, the, uh... They lost a lot of money on this. Uh, the game... I, I haven't played it. Like, when I bought my laptop, I got a free Steam key, which I will probably use. But, uh, it's not a good game. Guys, it's... If you've seen anything about Marvel's Adventures, you'll know it's not... It's not great. But, it's a thing that I think needs to stop. That won't. But we're gonna talk about it anyway. Activision Blizzard made over a billion from microtransactions in three months. Microtransactions. A billion dollars. I have only spent microtransactions on really one Blizzard game. Um, and that is Heroes of the Storm. Heroes of the Storm, I spent <clears throat> quite a bit on characters when I first, when I first played it. Um, it's different things, so I I bet I spent like $90. But I don't usually use microtransactions. So, this is... Ah... Uh, uh, this is bad news, because this means that more companies are going to keep doing this. They're going to keep doing it. <sighs> it's sad. Not a fan of, uh, not a fan of that. So the last thing I'm going to talk about is a video that we're not going to watch together. I'll put a link in the video's description. This and the information along with the SSDs is thanks to our good friend Hope. And Discord always has great gaming news for us. So big shout out to him for providing this. This video explains how to transfer data for your PS4 to PS5. I will be doing this for my saves. I'll be hopefully getting Trails of Cold Steel 4 to move over. I'll continue playing the really long, drawn out saga that is Rescue the Ash and Awakener. Keep doing the thing. So, uh, I'll put a link to this in the video description. But that's it for me this week, guys. Yeah, I appreciate you guys hanging out. I will be taking next week off. It's uh, my birthday next Saturday. We'll be having the podcast like normal, but I will be taking uh, Sunday off from Auburn time. So, until then, I will see you later. Uh, be sure to like this video if you like it. Subscribe. Check out my videos on Twitch. I stream all the time. Be happy to have you guys over there. Have a great one.